We've seen a huge rise in participation in sports by kids over recent years. Kids learn a lot about teamwork, about physical activity, and just about getting along in sports. Unfortunately, with this big rise in participation, we're also seeing a big rise in major injuries for kids. Right now, when kids tear their ACL, the operation that we do is one where we take out the torn ACL and we replace it with a graft of tendon taken from somewhere else in their knee. This is a great operation for getting kids back to sports, but it requires them rehabilitating and healing in not just the place where we put the graft, but also where we took the graft from. That drastic change in their life can last anywhere from six months to two years until they can get their strength back and return to their normal activities. For the life of a high schooler or a middle schooler, two years is an infinite amount of time. Our idea was that instead of taking a graft, what if we could somehow stimulate the original ACL to heal back together? Maybe that would be a less invasive way of treating these injuries for these kids. Thank you very much. Um, so today I'm going to talk about an injury that's near and dear to all Patriots fans' hearts today, the <laughs> ACL tears. <laughs> These are my disclosures here. We have grant funding from multiple different places, um, and I'm an inventor on some patents related to this technology. So let's just review briefly ligaments of the knee, because maybe not everybody knows them as well as I do. The anterior cruciate ligament is the big ligament in the middle of your knee that helps to stabilize your knee, particularly when you plant and pivot. The MCL is another important ligament of the knee, which unfortunately Dion Lewis did not tear, uh, and that's on the side of the knee. And the reason that that's unfortunate is because the MCL will heal uneventfully without surgery, but the ACL requires surgery. And when we first uh, started treating these injuries surgically, we treated them with something called a suture repair. So you put stitches in the torn ligament, and you try to sew it back together. But unfortunately, that procedure had a 50 to 90% failure rate. And so that was abandoned in favor of the operation we do today, which is an ACL reconstruction. And what that is is where we take a graft of tendon from elsewhere in the patient's leg, we put it through drill holes in the bone and attach it to the bone so it serves as a substitute for the ACL. And that's an awesome operation for most patients. So it gives you good stability of the knee. These high school and middle school uh, patients can get back to their sports at a very high rate. Uh, they're very happy with the outcomes in general. But the problem is they have to heal not only the ACL graft in its new place, they also have to heal the site where we took the tendons from. So it's a big rehab, and weakness can persist around the knee despite this in six months of intense physical therapy. For example, when we use a hamstring graft, patients still have about a 30% loss in their hamstring strength at six months out from surgery, even with this intense rehabilitation. And in addition, there's a high risk of post-traumatic arthritis, with up to 80% of patients having arthritis at only 14 years post-op. So if you do the math, if you're 14 when you tear your ACL, before you're 30, you have a pretty high chance of having knee arthritis. So we asked, is there a better way? What if we did this suture repair and we added some type of biologic boost? What if we put in, say, like a scaffold, or we put in some growth factors? Can you guys advance the slides? We're somehow missing the slide advance. Or added some growth factors. Or what if we could even add stem cells? make something really cool happen in there and get the ACL to heal instead of having to replace it. But if we were going to do something like that, what we have to do is figure out why doesn't the ACL heal in the first place. So to do that, we did a series of studies looking at some basic biology comparing the MCL and the ACL. And basically what we found was the major difference was a lack of bridge between the torn ends of the ACL after injury. And what I mean by that is illustrated here. So in the top panel, we have the MCL. And we've schematically illustrated a torn MCL, and then when it tears, the ends bleed, blood clots in between those two torn ends of the ligament, and that blood clot serves as a scaffolding for the tissue to grow back into and heal. In the ACL, because it lives in the fluid environment of the knee joint, when it tears, it bleeds, but that clot can't solidify, so there's no scaffold for the tissue to grow into. So we thought this problem is this early loss of the bridge between the torn ligament ends. So if that's the problem, what if we implanted a substitute bridge, something that would enable this tissue to grow into it and could maintain this ability to stimulate that cell ingrowth and proliferation and tissue healing? And then what if we used basically blood? Blood's a great stimulus for healing in all other places in the body. What if we just could capture that blood, make it clot, and stay where we needed it for the ACL? And so what we did was develop a scaffold that could do just that. So we have a scaffold. It's a collagen-based scaffold. Collagen is a major protein in ligaments, so ligament cells recognize it. It's designed to absorb up to five times its own weight in blood and hold it where we want it, right there in the wound site. And it can stimulate the blot to clot and solidify. And not only that, it activates platelets, which are the first step in wound healing. Um, it's made of the same proteins, again, found in the normal ACL, and it resorbs within eight weeks after implantation. 
So we have this bridge enhanced ACL repair system that we developed over time that uses the scaffold and the patient's own blood as the biologic wound healing agent to get the ACL to, to heal. So it's nice to have this idea on a PowerPoint, but really we have to test it at some point. So we went to in vivo testing. We did a large animal study where we cut the ACLs in both of the pig's knees. And then on one side, we treated it with suture repair alone. And the other side, we treated it with the suture plus the sponge and the blood. And we looked at some basic outcomes. And what the knees look like, gory slide coming, we're alert, uh, okay. This is, this is a pig knee, okay, at three months after surgery. So on the left panel, you can see where there's an intact ACL. It's coming down between the bones where that black arrow is. And in the middle slide, if we just treat an ACL tear there with suture alone, what happens is the, tear, the, the sutures break apart, the ends resorb, and there's nothing left in the notch. In contrast, if we do this suture repair with the scaffold and the blood, we see this bundle of fibrous tissue forming that looks awful a lot like an ACL. And if we go and then test how strong that tissue is, is it doing what it's supposed to do? When we compare that healing ACL tissue with an ACL reconstruction or a graft, the ACL repair is the mid mid middle blue bar, um, and the reconstruction is the dark blue bar, and you can see that they're pretty similar. Similarly, when we look at these uh, things and how it's healed after a year's time, we can see again that the ACL, the bridge enhanced ACL repair, which is the middle blue bar, compares very favorably with that of an ACL reconstruction. Interestingly, what we didn't expect is what happens with the arthritis. So if we have an ACL transection alone and we let the pigs walk around for a year, they start to develop arthritis in the exact same pattern our patients do after an ACL tear that's untreated. Similarly, when you do it, treat the pigs with an ACL reconstruction, they again develop the arthritis at that same pattern. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's the, it's the gunky stuff on the end of the bone there. See how that cartilage doesn't look smooth? That's arthritis. And you can see it in the ACL reconstruction the same way. But when we looked at the bridge enhanced ACL repair pigs, they didn't develop the arthritis. That was pretty cool. So with that in mind, we said, well, great. Now if your pig tears your ACL, we have got the solution for you. Right? <laughs> But, but there's a little bit of a step between that and then going to patients. And that, one of those steps involves talking to this agency called the FDA. So we've been working hard with the FDA for the past three years now. Um, they gave us a class three device classification, which means it's a high risk device. Um, and so we had to do certain amounts of testing, like design control, biocompatibility testing, sterility verification. Essentially, we had to set up a GLP manufacturing lab in our lab facility to make something that would be consistent enough and, and safe enough to try this in human patients. And we applied for an investigational device exemption in October of last year. We got our institutional review board approvals, and then we opened our trial in January, and the first patient was enrolled in February 2015. And now to present the results of uh, this, or to talk about this next phase of this first in human trial, I'd like to introduce Corey Peake from the Harvard School of Public Health. Thank you. So uh, with FDA approval, we were able to move forward with the uh, first in human study. And I say we because I actually feel like I'm part of the Team ACL now, which is why I'm representing it here. But um, the trial was including 10 people who would receive the bridge enhanced ACL repair and 10 who would be recruited for the ACL reconstruction, the standard repair or their standard method to serve as a comparator group. Um, all patients had to be able to give consent. So the age group would be at the least 18 and up to 35 for anesthesia reasons. Um, the outcomes of interest were incidents of infection and scaffold rejection, MRI appearance, patient recorded outcomes, how does the knee feel, knee stability and muscle strength. So here's a picture of a normal ACL. So this is actually not mine. Uh, you can see there's a kneecap, the femur at the top, and then the tibia below, and there's a dark band connecting them, and that is the ACL. Um, in January, I actually, in a ski accident, tore my ACL, and so this middle picture is from an MRI of my knee. You can see, actually, the dark band starting at the bottom, the ACL is there, but it's torn near the top, and the ACL is just flopped over onto the, onto the uh, tibia. However, I was fortunate enough to be the first uh, patient to receive the bridge enhanced ACL repair. And here's a picture at six months, so this is a couple months ago, showing uh, a rather continuous band. The ACL looks like it's healing. You can see striations that are following the more normal biological system. Um, so these are ex results that we were very excited about, and me in particular. Uh, so here are some, some of the early results. So all 20 patients were recruited within, uh, by the last month actually. Uh, there are no adverse events of infection or rejection. Um, all of the patients that were imaged by three months showed ACL repair tendencies. 
Um, the Bayer trial, the arm that I was in, were similar to the ACL reconstruction in overall knee function and stability. And they also, we saw outperformance of the, uh, the new trial method compared to the original, where the original we saw that around 70% of hamstring strength returned for post-op by six months. But for the new method, patients like myself received up to 98% hamstring strength by six months. Oh, can we go to the next slide, please? So as a brief summary, uh, using a scaffold, we think can, to bridge the ACL tear site can stimulate ACL healing. The bridge enhanced ACL repair may someday lead to a less invasive way to stabilize the knee. This could, may make muscle growth come back easier, and the early preclinical studies are also showing that it may minimize post-traumatic osteoarthritis in the long term. These early studies show some promise, but additional follow-up studies are needed. Here's a brief look at some of the grant support that Dr. Murray has received over the years. Thank you very much. <laughs>